It was in the year 1961. A small boy of a comparatively small and slender frame walked behind his father, wearing a dhoti and white full-sleeved shirt. He carried in his hand a small tin trunk containing a pair of clothes, a blanket and some other essentials as he had been instructed by the seminary authorities. Having passed class 9, little Raphael was going to join the CMI seminary at El Turat, all because the little boy believed that he was called by God to be a priest, though he had no knowledge what hurdles lay ahead. He wanted to be a priest like the elderly CMI priest, Father Amart, whose altar boy he was no matter what bargains he had to make with life itself. His face radiated a strong will as he paced behind his father. He was naughty enough to join the seminary. But was he holy enough to go to the seminary? No doubt, he was cherubic. He wasn't extra smart to be outstanding. He didn't outshine his companions in academics. He excelled in sports and games. He could never be deterred from hard work, even if it demanded physical exhaustion. Was he rated excellent when compared to his classmates? No, he was so-so, but maintained a comfortable position all through. Brother Raphael was a much sought-after man in the seminary because of his dexterity and helpful nature. He possesses an innate ability to fix anything and everything, even broken hearts. Soft-spoken, level-headed, matter-of-fact, the young seminarian did not have to think otherwise about his religious and priestly vocation. The fervent altar boy of always cherished the worth of his vocation and prayed earnestly and intently that God should make him an instrument of his peace. He wanted to be a handyman of God. He offered up himself to God's service when he made his first religious profession on May 16, 1965 and never looked back. His companions befriended him as a good footballer, an efficient problem solver and as a no-nonsense man. He excelled where most failed. He persisted when others gave up and he ventured where others dreaded. This impressive trait of his personality has travelled with him wherever he went and in whatever commitment he undertook or the responsibilities he was entrusted with by his superiors. He has made himself amiable to thousands of people he has worked with or lived with. These qualities of his personality are now as solid and edifying as the hundreds of buildings he has constructed down the years as a civil engineer. Jesus said, a city built on a hill can never be hidden. After his university studies and philosophy and theology training at Dharmaram College, Bangalore, Brother Raphael was ordained to priesthood on April 22, 1972. It was a fulfilling moment for the young seminarian, his parents and relatives. As a newly ordained priest, Raphael cherished a dream to go to the missions and the new Sagar mission was calling. It was then Bishop Clemens Totungal, the exarch of the newly erected Sagar mission, was looking for young blood and new priests to work in the mission. And he handpicked Father Raphael, who was then engaged in pastoral ministry in Kerala. His option for the mission was a dream come true. He stared out as a fervent missionary to a faraway land, to an alien culture and an unknown language. His amazingly resilient nature was a ready help for him in all difficult situations. He was always prepared for the worst. He fares well, even when the odds are heavily against him. Whenever the bishop or the religious superiors decided an appointment for him, it was always a big and bold yes from Father Raphael. His interest in construction works and the ingenuity with which he planned and designed buildings, even as an amateur, in the initial years of the Sagar mission prompted the superiors to send him for civil engineering to equip him as a professional. 
at a time when many new mission stations were being established in the missions, buildings and structures of all kinds were to be constructed with far-sightedness, optimum utility and with minimum funds. As soon as Father Raphael returned as a professional, he had many big and small construction assignments waiting for him. He has the rare resourcefulness to balance quality, finance, strength, beauty and utility in the buildings he makes. Now, many mission stations in central India have impressive buildings of schools, residences, convents, presbyteries, churches and chapels, administrative offices and well laid out campuses of institutions as the handiwork of a master craftsman who works round the clock silently and diligently. Having completed an assignment, he moves on to newer places and indulges himself with the same vigour and resoluteness in the new projects. His religious discipline is a joy to watch. He never compromises on principles. As a religious superior, he was very prompt to animate the community by example. A man of no wants, no demands, Father Raphael Parambat engrosses himself in the works he undertakes and keeps himself busy all day. His calendar has no days marked red. It means he has no holidays ever. His day stretches at 12 o'clock in the night. Still, his day begins as early as 5 a.m. He does not simply oversee the works or give orders to the workers, but works with them as one of them. He makes sure what he makes stands the test of time. A close observation will reveal that Father Parambat deliberately avoids luxury and extravaganza in his personal life as well as in his constructions. Sobriety is his hallmark. Father Parambat was sent to the United States to optimize his engineering skills while also involving himself in pastoral commitments. Coming back to the missions, he was given greater responsibilities and newer projects to accomplish. He toiled hard to establish the institutions at Vidisha, Sagar, Guna, Ashoknagar, Kurai, Narsingpur, Bhopal, Kareli and Raisin in Madhya Pradesh and many other North Indian mission stations. The saga of his silent but impressive service continues unabated. He works with the same passion and vigour as ever. Nothing bears him out, nothing bothers him with. No adversity can kill his enthusiasm. As Robert Frost says, Woods are lovely, dark and deep. But I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. Fifty years of religious life is his offering to God, his contribution to establish God's kingdom. It is a matter of joy and rightful pride for all of us to rejoice with him, to thank God for the gift of Father Raphael Parambat. We, the CMI, St. Paul Province proudly and gratefully acknowledge the great service of our dear brother Father Raphael Parambat and wish him a happy jubilee and Art Multos Anos. <laughs>